Hello, welcome back to Sweet MTG, and welcome to Instant Deck Techs. In this series, we go over everything you need to build a certain commander. We'll go over the strategies and the types of cards needed you need to get the deck working. Any cards we mention will be down in the description below. In this video, we're going to be looking at Moldrotha the Gravetide. It is 3 black, green, blue for a 6 6 legendary creature elemental avatar. It has during each of your turns, you may play a land card and cast a permanent of each permanent type from your graveyard. Moldrotha is one of the most versatile commanders out there, and it can lead a multitude of graveyard based strategies. With this reprint in Double Masters 2022, there is no better time to talk about one of my favourite commanders, so today we're going to build the best graveyard deck ever. So, firstly, let's go over what this deck is trying to do. That ability on Moldrotha is really powerful, as it means we can keep bringing back permanents turn after turn. The way Moldrotha is worded, when you play the permanent from a graveyard, if they share a type, you can pick which one of its types it counts towards. So take Gravebreaker Lamia for example, you can cast it from the graveyard as either an enchantment or a creature. That flexibility is really good, so we're looking for effects on permanents that where possible share types. In terms of strategy, the first part in any good graveyard based deck is getting things into the graveyard. Like with most of the effects we're going to be running in the deck, we'll be looking at these on permanents. We'll then use the graveyard as an extension of our hand, so with Mordrotha and some other effects we can keep casting spells throughout the game. When it comes to winning the game, we have some great effects that care about the size of our graveyard, and also some combos for those so inclined. The first category we're going to look at is Self Mill. In this deck this effectively replaces a large portion of our card draw, as with Mordrotha we can play things out of the graveyard. To begin with, we either want cheap creatures that mill us when they come into play, or slightly more expensive creatures that repeatedly mill us turn after turn. There's some good ones on screen here, but there's plenty more out there to suit your budget. Next up, and because it's me, we have some dredge cards. These let us replace drawing a card to instead mill the dredge number, and then bring the dredge card back from our graveyard to our hand. You don't need to run every dredge card under the sun, but the ones on screen here are all good enough by themselves to warrant including. Dagmar Salvage being on a land means it's basically free. Life from the Loam is great at letting us get some lands back from our graveyard so we can hit all of our land drops. Necroplasm is a mini board wipe for small creatures. Stinkweed Imp is a fantastic annoying blocker when you need a creature to play, and then Golgari Grave Troll can be an absolutely huge creature while also having the highest dredge count. And then last, some very solid bits of self mill. Altar of Dementia also being a sacrifice outlet will be great, as we can sack some value creatures with good enter the battlefield effects and replay them from our graveyard with Moldrotha. Mesmeric Orb can also put a ton of cards into our graveyard when we untap, as importantly it does include our lands on the start of the turn as well. And then we have Underrealm Lich, which has a weird kind of surveil when we draw a card, where we look at the top 3 and put one into our hand, but nicely the other two go into our graveyard. All these effects will mean our graveyard will be full in no time. Moving over to our card draw, we really don't need as much as a regular deck as we have all the self mill, but these will help us get more options and things to do, especially if Moldrotha is ever removed. First up is some card draw on creatures, specifically ones that draw cards when they enter the battlefield. I stand by Baleful Strix being one of the best early plays in any command game, as it all but guarantees you don't get attacked. Then we have Uro and Moldrifter, which are both also great as they go straight to the graveyard while drawing us some cards, so we can cast them again for even more value with Moldrotha. After those we have Secrets of the Dead and River Kelpie, which draw us some cards whenever we play something out of the graveyard. And then one last bit of card draw to mention is Mystic Remora, which has a mega version of the Ristic Study effect for non-creature spells. I'm not normally the biggest fan of these effects, but because with Moldrotha we never really get taxed by the cumulative upkeep, because if it ever gets too annoying to pay, we can just let it go to the graveyard and then recast it with Moldrotha. Moving over to our ramp, like a lot of things on this list we're primarily going to want them to be on permanence. First up is Gravebreaker Lamia, which will sit in our graveyard and then make all the spells we cast from there with Moldrotha one mana cheaper. Then to help us actually get Moldrotha out in the first place, we have cards like Diligent Farmhand, Neverwinter Dryad, Secure Tribelder, Dawn Treader Elk, and Yavimaya Granger. These are great, as they're creatures that ramp us ahead while also going to the graveyard, so we can either recast them or let them sit there. Having a large number of creatures in our graveyard will really help with our win conditions, which we'll get onto a little bit later. In a similar vein to these, but more one that you want to be casting over and over again, is Wayfarer's Bauble, which can also get lands out of the deck and onto the battlefield. Then we also have some mana dorks, in the form of Deranged Assistant, Millikanin, and Skull Prophet. While these may be less efficient than a regular Lanorwells, they can also mill us while they're ramping us ahead, so they are great inclusions. Next up is a couple of sections of cards that you don't need to run all of, but are nice additions and can really spice up the deck a little. First of these is cards that let us play multiple lands per turn. 
There are more of these out there, but cards like Exploration and Azusa Lost But Seeking will mean that we can play multiple lands out of our hand in the early game. But then with Moldrotha out, we can play a land from our hand, and also a land from our graveyard in the same turn. Talking of playing lands from our graveyard, we've already mentioned it, but Life from the Loam, and then also Ramnab Excavator, can really help with us hitting our land drops before we get Moldrotha out. These mean we can start milling ourselves as quickly as possible, and don't need to worry about drawing lands to play. And then lastly, we have some cards that work really nicely if you're playing the dredge cards. Green Seeker, Lanawan Mentor, Silverglade Pathfinder, and Dreamscape Artist, all help with ramping and a bit of fixing, as well as giving us some discard outlets. Then we can put the dredge card back into the graveyard, ready to be dredged back to our hand over and over again for some more mill. Moving over to our interaction, and again we're primarily going to be looking to have these on permanent effects that we can reuse. First up is some interaction on some creatures. These are great bits of utility that can answer what our opponents are trying to do, all while counting towards our creature count in the graveyard. There's also a nice couple of board wipes we can consider on creatures, with Knight Incarnate, Massacre Girl, and Massacre Worm. We also have some other options on enchantments. Seal of Primordium can repeatedly answer any artifact or enchantments. Seal of Doom can answer some non-black creatures. Binding of the Old Gods is some removal and some ramp as well. And then Pernicious Deed and Phyrexian Scriptures work really well as solid board wipes to help keep everyone else in check. We do still want a little bit of recursion in the deck, mainly to add some redundancy if for whatever reason Modrotha isn't around. First up, we have some cards that let us return any card from our graveyard to our hand. Special notes here to Timeless Witness, which importantly can be cast from the graveyard by itself. And then also we have Tamiyo Collector of Tales, which can return a card to our hand, but can also help out with our mill as well. Then we have two sorceries, which can return creatures from the graveyard to play. Importantly, these both have flashback, so can be cast from the graveyard themselves, which is very nice. And then one last card that I absolutely love is Tortured Existence. This lets you swap a creature in the graveyard with one from our hand for just a black mana. This is another great way of putting those dredgers back into the graveyard while getting a value creature back to our hand so we can cast it again. As a fair chunk of the plan for the deck revolves around having the commander out, we want to run a couple of bits of protection to keep it around. First up are cards that make it much harder to remove. We can give it Shroud with Sylvan Safekeeper and Lightning Greaves. We then also have some effects that can counter some removal with Siren Storm Tamer and Glenelenger Archmage. Then there is also Kaya's Ghost Form, which we can put onto Mordrotha so that when it dies it returns to the battlefield. Then we can recast the Ghost Form and put it back on, ready to protect it all over again. But it's not just Mordrotha that we need to protect. Our graveyard will also need a bit of protection as well. Perpetual Timepiece is a great card that can help mill us, but importantly also lets us dodge any graveyard hate our opponents are throwing around. Moving over to some wing cons. Everything up to now to an extent has been the engine that gets the deck rolling. Coming up we'll go over some cool ways of winning the game. Of these I definitely want to pick at least two or three so you know what your deck is working towards. First up is Sir Conrad the Grim. This will deal a damage to each opponent whenever a creature of ours dies or a creature goes to or from the graveyard. With all the self mill and dredge cards bouncing in and out of our graveyard this will add up to a ton of damage very quickly. Next up we have some token makers. These make bodies equal to the number of creatures in our graveyard, so in this deck they can make some pretty scary board states very quickly. Or if you'd like, instead of going wide, you can go tall, with cards whose power and toughness is equal to the number of creatures in our graveyard. And then when you have that massive creature, you can then throw it at your opponents with Jared Golgari Lichlord. Moving on, the ultimate of Grist also does a really good job at winning the game, while its other abilities also do everything that the deck wants to do as well. But remember, it's not just creatures that'll be in our graveyard, we have lands go in there as well. We can bring them all back in one go with something like Splendid Reclamation or World Shaper. If you combine that with something with a powerful landfall ability, like Scootswarm for example, and again we have another amazing board state. Alternatively, you can use all that mana to cast an insanely big villainous wealth and take the best cards from our opponent's decks. Then you also have cards that let you win the game when you have no cards in your library. You don't have to run any special Doomsday combo or whatever to make these work. With all the mill, you can very easily churn through your whole deck and win with one of these cards. Then for those who like a combo, you can run Machaeus the Unhallowed, which can lead to infinite damage when combined with Walking Ballista or Triskelion. Basically you ping an opponent, the creature dies, comes back with a plus one on counter from Machaeus, ping an opponent again, it dies, and then loops. And then one last combo, which only needs one additional card from things we've already mentioned. That additional card is Lotus Petal. When Lotus Petal is combined with Moldrotha, Kaya's Ghost Form and Altar of Dementia, you can infinitely mill out any player. For it to work you need all permanents in play, and you need Kaya's Ghost Form attached to Moldrotha. You sack Moldrotha to Altar of Dementia and mill out a player. Kaya's Ghost Form will mean Moldrotha will come back into play. 
You then sack the Lotus Petal to recast Kai's Ghost Form from the graveyard. And then because Lotus Petal is 0 mana, you can then recast it as well. You can repeat this infinitely and mill out all of your opponents, because every time Modrotha comes back, it's a new creature, and doesn't care about the permanents you've already played that turn with the other Modrothas. Rounding off the deck with some utility lands, although we're 3 colour, because we can play them out of our graveyard with Modrotha, we actually want to run slightly more than normal. First up is Cephalid Colosseum, which is another great way to add some extra mill to the deck. Then you have the Cycling Lands, which we can pitch early to smooth out our draws, and then just replay them later in the game. We also have some cool colourless lands that we can run. Lotus Field will sack 3 lands when it comes in, but then again we can just replay them. We then also have Glacial Chasm, which can be a miserable card to play against. But, like Mystic Remora that we mentioned earlier, we can just replaying it with Mordrotha, so the cumulative upkeep effect never gets that bad. Then we have Field of the Dead, which is just really good in a deck like this, especially with the cards that dump all the lands out of our graveyard into play in one go. And then, because why not, you can run Dark Depths and Thespian Stage to make your own squiddly monster. The rest of your mana base will be very dependent on what you have available to you. We recently released a video with some advice on building a deck with a budget mana base, which might be of help. Until next time, please like, share and subscribe, and let us know down in the comments if there are any commanders you'd like to see a deck tech on. Thank you very much for watching.